Hey everybody, this is Dream, and today we have our uh, two-game slate for Thursday that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, actually, both games start at that time. This is Baylor, West Virginia, Temple, and UCF. Um, so the Baylor-West Virginia game has a 54-point over-under, and uh, Baylor's favored by three points. Um, so that game should be pretty even. Uh, Temple UCF is a 46 over under, and UCF is favored by 23 and a half points. So obviously Temple is the outside looking in here. So with that said, let's get into the players themselves. Uh, before I get started, thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. Shout out to the Patreon people, really do appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, oh yeah, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button if you don't mind. So at quarterback, uh, we really have... Um, just a few guys to take a look at here. Um, obviously, with a two-game slate, there's only four like starting quarterbacks. And there's really three that we're going to take a look at. Uh, Temple doesn't really throw the ball very much. As you can see, he only averages 11.6 fantasy points a game. Uh, and, you know, they don't throw the ball as much as some of the other teams on this particular slate. And they're also favored to get walloped, so he doesn't score many fantasy points in general. Um, so let's look at uh, Plum Lee first for UCF. Um, now, he's actually been really solid so far this season. He's only had one game where he didn't score over 20 fantasy points, and so I do like him a lot. Not only that, but he also runs the ball, um, so that's a huge advantage for him. Uh, UCF is going to run the ball a lot in this particular game, especially if they get out ahead early, and so I suspect that he will be a guy that will have opportunity to score quite a few fantasy points in this game, um, and he's my favorite quarterback on the slate. Uh, my second favorite guy is uh, Sharpen for Baylor. Now, he's been a little bit inconsistent, but he is, well, just because he's had a 7-point game against Baylor. But otherwise, he's averaging 20 fantasy points a game, and so I do like uh, that. Uh, he also is throwing some touchdowns. He really doesn't run the ball much, and so you can't really rely on any bonus fantasy points from that perspective. And he also has been better at home than on the road, so we do have to consider that a little bit. But overall, uh, he is in a good spot here. This game should be tight. It should be a good uh, game overall, and he should be the top quarterback in this particular game. He has thrown about the same amount of yards as West Virginia's quarterback. They're both kind of even. Um, now, JT Daniels is the West Virginia quarterback. He He's just been more inconsistent on the season uh, than Sharpen has, and he has he really doesn't score as many points as Sharpen does, and so I do like uh, Sharpen quite a bit better. Uh, West Virginia is a little bit more balanced. They do throw the ball a lot, uh, but... Uh, they're a little bit more balanced when it comes to, like, their run attack as well. And their rush, and both teams are going to, you know, have a pretty balanced attack overall. But the West Virginia guys, uh, you know, they get more yards to the air. The wide receivers do, but uh, the guys for, ba for Baylor, you know, the quarterback does more. So, overall, I think it's pretty solid uh, slate from that perspective, these two teams. Uh, I just suspect that, the, like, if you need individual wide receivers, West Virginia's going to be better. If you need a quarterback that's going to uh, throw the ball around and hit a lot of different wide receivers and score fancy points, then Baylor's is better. So there's kind of how I'm looking at that. Um, at the uh, running back situation, we only have really three guys to take a deep look at. Uh, Richard Reese for Baylor is the first guy. He's had 72 rushes on the year with four 400 yards and seven touchdowns. I suspect he'll get a touchdown or two in this game. Uh, he's going to have some upside here. He's been a little bit boomer bust on the season, but I do like him, and he's a pretty safe play, and he's also $5,400. So one thing about this slate that's interesting is that, so, you know, the Mendoza line here is 62.50 that we need to average per player on the slate, and there's just really not a ton of overpriced guys. Like, the most expensive guy here is Plumlee for the quarterback, and there's really only a couple guys at the wide receiver situation that we even... Uh, like a lot that are over that price as well. So everybody else, you know, uh, the second running running back is a little bit over at 6,900. That's Bowser for UCF. But overall, there's just, uh, it's a really good uh, slate. Plenty of value. You can play pretty much whoever you want. Uh, Bowser for UCF. Um, now, he's been a little bit inconsistent this season, but I still think he's going to get 10 to 15 fantasy points. And on this particular slate, He's had the most rush rush attempts on this slate, and uh, he's pretty safe uh, from that perspective. He's also scored eight touchdowns on the season, so I think he's in a pretty good spot. Obviously, Temple's defense is pretty decent, but I think UCF is going to be able to have a good game. Now, uh, the next guy I'm going to mention is Ty Tony Mathis Jr. Now, I don't love him, but he's been pretty good uh, two of the three game two of the last three games. Um, uh, 
um, their top from running back is actually hurt, which is Donaldson. And so he and uh, Johnson, uh, let's see, uh, Johnson Jr., they, they, they uh, are going to be in a timeshare here. But I just think that Mathis is a better running back in general here, so he's the guy that I would prefer. You could take a look at Johnson if you need to save a little extra money, but I don't think you're going to need to. Uh, I think that uh, Mathis has the most upside here, and he's got the most touchdown potential as well. He's rushed 70 times on the season, too, because he was the second running back behind uh, Donaldson for most of the season, so I think he'll have a larger role in this matchup. Um, then if we look at the uh, wide receiver situation, so we have three guys from Baylor, three guys from West Virginia, and two guys from the Central Florida to take a look at. And so I'm going to do that in that kind of order. So for Baylor, we have Baldwin, uh, Sims, and Presley are the top three. Um, Presley, I just look for him to potentially get a 7-10 to 10 fantasy point game at his price point of $4,000. That's not bad. Uh, Sims is a guy that I actually really like here. Um, he gets the most receptions on this team, but he doesn't have the most touchdowns, but he does get the most receptions. He just had, the only thing he lacks in his yards, really. But he's pretty safe when it comes to a floor, so he should get, at minimum, 7 to 10 fantasy points. And then Baldwin, he's the top guy for them. Now, he doesn't get as many receptions. He was hurt for a couple games, but he does get the targets, and I think he has uh, quite a bit of upside in this matchup. Um, where he should be able to uh, get an opportunity to score some points. Um, he's the favorite for Baylor when it comes to just overall fantasy point production. Uh, then we're going to look at West Virginia. Um, now, their three guys are Ford Wheaton, uh, uh, Prather, and then Sam James. Now, uh, the trick with these guys is, is that Wheaton gets the most uh, attempts thrown at him. He's going to have the opportunity to score the most points. He's been pretty inconsistent the last couple weeks, but I still think he's uh, going to have opportunity to score 15 to 20 fantasy points in this game, and he could break out for a bigger one, especially considering this game has a high scoring upside. And uh, JT Daniels, while he does spread the ball around a lot, Wheaton is his favorite target. Uh, Prather uh, is another guy I like here for them. Um, he's only 5100 bucks, and he's just pretty safe. Like He's been getting 15 fantasy points, 13 fantasy points a game, and he's probably not going to do bad. He's going to get six to eight targets, and we do like that. And if we can score a touchdown, that'll boost him up even higher. And his price is too cheap for his potential production in this one. And then uh, the final guy is uh, Sam, uh, see, Sam James here. Now, Sam James, um, he doesn't get as many uh, uh, balls thrown at him. But he does make a lot happen with him. He's uh, second on the team when it comes to total yards as a as a uh, wide receiver. And so that's why I like him a little bit. He's not my most ideal one. If I did put them in order, I would put Ford Wheaton, then Prather, then James. But I still think he's somebody you have to take a look at simply because he manages to get a lot of yards off of the limited production that he gets. And then finally for UCF, uh, we have two guys. is Baker and O'Keefe. Uh, so Javon Baker, um, he's the... Basically, the uh, top dog here, he has 24 receptions for 395 and two touchdowns. Now, it's a little odd because UCF does run the ball a lot, so they don't get quite as many attempts as some of the other wide receivers. Uh, and they're a little bit more inconsistent, but he has a lot of upside here. Um, and I suspect that he have a 10 to 15 point game, if not a little bit higher, in this matchup where they, sus they should blow out, uh, you know, should be passing the ball more than uh, running it. Um, then O'Keefe for... Uh, uh, for them as well. Um, he's kind of in a similar situation. He's uh, he he's a little bit more inconsistent than Baker is. Now, I don't love either of these guys when it comes to just so much value from the other positions, but you'll probably end up being able to use one of them because of the price point, especially for like a flex option or something. And so that's kind of how I see the UCF uh, wide receivers on this game. But overall, I think this is a pretty solid slate. I think you can kind of mix and match the players however you want in order to make, a, make the best lineups you can. Uh, like I said, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages on the three quarterbacks. And then wider, running back seems pretty stiff at, as, as there's really just three guys to choose from and you need two at least. And you could even throw the other one in flex if you wanted. Though I think you want to probably put flex as another wide, rec wide receiver and then put in the S flex. Uh, you know, if you want to use Sharpen and, and Plumlee, you can throw Sharpen at quarterback and then Plumlee at S flex or even put JT Daniels at S flex. So... Overall, it's just got to mix and match those guys. 
Uh, beyond the guys I mentioned, there's really not a whole lot other unless there's a guy that just randomly booms for a touchdown or something. You know, there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff there. There's just so much value on the slate because of some of the little, in, you know, even though there's like the one injury with the Donaldson, which opens up a couple other options. Uh, the the prices on these players are really low for what I expect, what I expected when I started taking a look at the slate. So overall, uh, thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys.